Helldivers, two long-awaited support weapons are finally here. The LAS-99 Quasar Cannon and the MG-101 Heavy Machine Gun were surprise launch into the game, and you better believe we put both guns through their paces so you know exactly where they're good and where they fall short. We'll start with the Quasar Cannon, as this is easily the most exciting weapon we have seen come to the game since launch. Players can unlock it as part of the engineering-based stratagem for the price of 7,500 requisition once you meet the level requirement. It's got a base 3-second call-down time, unlimited uses, and a 480-second cooldown. For all intents and purposes, the Quasar Cannon is the anti-armor weapon of our dreams. It delivers a powerful charged energy blast that can one-shot bot drops out of the sky as well as take down armored bugs like Bile Titans and Chargers with relative ease. You stack a couple of these on your squad and you might as well forget about things like the Recoilless and even the Eats because the Quasar Cannon does almost everything better. What I especially like about the weapon is two things. First is that it doesn't require any ammunition. Because it fires a single charged up shot, there's no risk of it ever overheating. You simply can't use the gun if it's not ready, which means you never have to worry about running out of ammunition when you need it the most. The second thing I like is that it doesn't take up a backpack slot like some of the other supporting stratagems, like the recoilless rifle or the auto cannon. This means on the bot front, you can wear something else like the energy shield, or on the bug front, rock something like the guard dog rover. Don't discount this because it's a big part of why the Quasar Cannon works and works so well. Not only is it powerful, but it gives you more flexibility as a Helldiver. The other amazing thing about this weapon is its usability during combat. First off, you can move while it's charging, and while that charge time is one of its weaknesses, very rarely did I ever find that to be a true problem. Instead, I just made sure I was using the Quasar in a situation where I had that distance from enemies to get off a shot. Even in close range, so long as I wasn't under crazy pressure, it was easy enough to use, and because of that charging time, I could adjust my positioning and shot trajectory the entire time it was winding up. I also found a really interesting strategy with the Quasar, and this makes extraction or holding down any sort of hardpoint much easier than it's ever been before. If you call down another LAS-99, which you can do so as long as it's off cooldown, you can seemingly swap or alternate shots between both weapons. This almost doubles your output as you're firing two different lasers with independent cooldown cycles. This is especially important because most enemies require two hits from the Quasar. Not all, and depending on your accuracy, your mileage may vary, but having two ready-to-fire cannons at your fingertips is without a doubt the most effective way to hold your ground and take out armored targets. The lack of ammunition also means the cannon can double as a utility weapon. You don't have to save it for the biggest and baddest enemies on the front like you often have to do with the Eats and the Recoilless. In this way, the Quasar is just as effective as any other support weapon that can take out Brood Commanders and Heavy Devastators, but you do always have to be mindful of that cooldown cycle. The weapon can also destroy bug holes and bot bunkers, which is a very nice added bonus. The shots have to be more or less dead center into a vent or the hole itself, but it does do the job. The Quasar can also destroy some lesser secondary objectives, which further adds to its value. Ultimately, this thing gets the job done. Bottom line, the Quasar Cannon might be the best weapon added to the game since launch. It is the anti-armor weapon we have desperately needed that can kill most every armored target with ease, and since it doesn't require a backpack and has unlimited ammunition, there are very few alternatives that even compare. I think there's still an argument to be made for Eats, which shouldn't be thrown to the wayside. The Quasar is very good when you have that extra second to breathe and prepare. Eats, on the other hand, are entirely reactive and still excel when you need to deal with high priority targets quickly. You also have that flexibility of using another support weapon alongside the Eats, so there is still some value there. That being said, if you have not checked out the Quasar Cannon yet, I implore you to spend the requisition and do so because this item is truly powerful. That brings us to the second weapon released today, the MG-101 Heavy Machine Gun. I was genuinely wondering how they were going to implement yet another variation of a machine gun into the game. Now, think of the biggest, bulkiest, clunkiest machine gun you can imagine, and that, my friends, is the MG-101. I think it could have been good, but upon initial review, I'm just not a fan. To unlock the MG-101 Heavy Machine Gun, you need 6,000 requisition points and the appropriate level. 
This is unlocked in the Patriotic Administration Center, which makes it another true support weapon in the existing arsenal of stratagems. What you'll immediately notice upon using the gun is that it doesn't have a reticle in third person. This could be a bug, and if so, I expect it to get patched quickly, but if intentional, then that means the MG-101 has to be used primarily in first person, which might immediately dissuade people from using it. The gun's hallmarks are its high damage and insane recoil, which is even more difficult to manage in first person because you're constantly fighting with the gun lurching both vertically and horizontally. I actually found that the only way to use this with any modicum of accuracy was by slowing down the RPMs and the weapon's customization to its slowest option. That way, I had at least a little control over my fire. You could further improve this by wearing an armor set that reduces recoil, and all of my gameplay does include that, which I think is the right call, but still, that recoil is out of control. If your dream for a machine gun is to lay down a thick bed of fire, sadly, this is not the right gun for you. Not only are you dealing with that recoil I just mentioned, but also the insanely small magazine capacity. 75 rounds per magazine is just too few by my standards, and it severely hamstrings the performance of the weapon. Now, if you are judicious and control how many rounds you use, there's something to be said about the gun's damage, which is impressive. This thing can take out pretty much any target short of fully armored with relative ease, but that's only if you're incredibly disciplined on the trigger. The gun is almost at odds with itself and what you expect from a machine gun, which really leads me to the conclusion that it's poorly designed. Does it do a lot of damage? Sure, but do you actually have to use the weapon in an impractical way? Also, yes, and I think that's the biggest issue I see with the gun. Add on to that, the weapon's biggest limitation, its magazine, is made worse by only giving the player two reserve magazines, and believe me, you feel that during combat. Ultimately, the weapon just doesn't stand up against the rigors of Helldivers 2, especially on the more punishing end of the difficulty spectrum. It could be a good support weapon, but right now, there are just too many things working against one another, and that makes for a very clunky weapon. So there you have it, our assessment of the LAS-99 Quasar Cannon and the MG-101 Heavy Machine Gun. Hopefully, you've had a chance to go hands-on with these bad boys yourself, and I'd love to know what you think. Leave us a comment down below and share your thoughts on these two new stratagems. As always, if you like our Helldivers 2 content and you want more videos like this in your feed, all you have to do is hit that thumbs up and, of course, consider subscribing. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.